This is TMG, and this is Smashing Drive for the Game Boy fans. Smashing Drive is an arcade racing game developed and published by Gilco for the arcades in 2000. A GameCube and Xbox version was already made by Point of View and published by Namco in 18th of February 2002 for the GameCube and 13th May 2002 for the Xbox. The version that I'm looking at right now is the Game Boy Advance version, developed by DSi Games and published by Sue Digital for publishing on two release dates. 3rd of November 2004 in the US and the 18th of February 2005 for the PAL region. The game's overall goal is to drive your taxi around New York delivering your passengers to their destinations before an opposing taxi does, by all means possible. What I mean about that is that there are special power-ups that can be obtained to give yourself an advantage, and there are also alternate ways of driving to your destination that include taking ramps or going through places that cars don't normally go through. Many of the shortcuts are nice, but my favorite had to be the one where the beginning of the shortcut is pushing King Kong off the building, and that was cool. There are two modes to cover, Arcade and Survival. Arcade allows you to work within the arcade rules and gives you four sifts to work in. Each time you be a sift, a new one becomes available. Survival mode is kind of the same, with the possible exception that you can damage your cab to an extent that you cannot go further in the stage. The controls for this game was great. You'll use the directional pad to move slash turn your car, A to accelerate, B to apply brakes, and the R trigger to honk your horn. The graphics were alright considering limitations. Much of the textures were drawn out nicely, but on some odd moments, some of the playfield might not load properly. <laughs> The music was nice as well. Unfortunately, the announcer can get annoying as gameplay continues. Up and running! Repair! Fortunately, you can alter both the sounds and the music, so you can listen to the nice music without the annoying traffic beeping their horns at you occasionally. If I ever had any complaints, it's the length. Altogether, my arcade walkthrough, including cut footage, took me only 22 minutes to complete, and that's a bit underwhelming to me. If a game takes this long to complete, then I would expect the game to have some sort of replay ability to make up for the short playtime. But there's survival mode, where the damage of the car actually matters, first raising the difficulty level a little bit, and that's it for replayability without multiplayer. I have mixed feelings about this game. The overall premise is very nice, but its overall playtime and replay value seems to be a bit too low for this game. If you can find a good price for this game, like 5 bucks, then it might be worth a buy.